What's up friends? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Pam. Today we have a seed video for all you seed video enthusiasts. So today what I'm going to do is show you what's in my uh, currently being planted seed bin here and that is for uh, we are approaching the fall growing season here in New England and um, we're actually in the middle of a severe drought right now which is fucking terrible. Thankfully my wonderful partner um, put in drip irrigation for my birthday last month, um, two months ago. <laughs> Time is going. So thankfully my plants haven't suffered too much during this drought. Unfortunately all the perennials, the things that I'm not willing to, you know, use water during a drought for, so that's like the bulk of my garden. We're only irrigating the vegetable beds. So everything else is, oh, it's a little crispy out there, but um, you'll see a garden tour coming up pretty soon because I want to get one done before the rains come, assuming they ever will, um, because everything is so beautiful out there right now. It's just like, there's almost no disease because there just hasn't been a lot of moisture to create fungal problems on my plants. So that's coming. I've got my coffee and um, we are gonna go through this. It's like a good amount of seeds, so I'm gonna, Try not to take 8 million years, but I know a lot of you like to watch these videos while you're doing something else, so maybe that will be good for you. I just wanted to sit down and film while my neighbors are being quiet. It uh, doesn't happen very often. Or for very long. Fungus gnat, really? So basically the second growing season is a lot like the spring, so you're basically just replanting the stuff that you would have grown through the late winter into the spring and then pull up, you know, because it bolts or whatever in the heat. All right, so let's start with some root crops. So um, I have a little fistful of radish seeds here and um, I have a few different kinds. I was given this incredible box. It's it's over there. It's a big, it's a big box of seeds from a friend of mine. They were just gonna get tossed out, so she sent them to me and they're all from this year. So I am, you know, sending a bunch to my friends and I'm filling the little free libraries around here. You'll see that in a video coming up soon. But anyway, I digress. Here are some seeds. So if you see a lot of like burpee seeds, that's where those came from. So I've got a couple packages of um, French dressing radishes and these only take 25 to 35 days of harvest. So you can get several cycles of these going. Um, from now until the frost and um, I plan to do that and same with these these are 22 day radishes these are cherry bells and this is also the prime time to be planting your watermelon radish and watermelon radish is um, in my experience a little difficult to get to grow all the way without bolting in the spring so because this takes, um, yeah, see this is a 60 day radish. So this takes a little while. So I got to get to these, well, I did plant some, but I need to get some more in the ground. Um, you know, you have that extra time for them to finish maturing and they're not going to bolt in the heat because it's only going to get cooler. So get your watermelon radishes in because now is the time. And then as far as beets go, we've got some standard uh, Detroit dark red right here. I actually don't think I've even grown these because um, I always have to buy, you know, the fancy varieties, which is silly. You should try the very common ones because they're common for a reason. Uh, we've got the early wonder beet right here. As you can see, I have already gotten some of those in the ground. This is the robin beet. Uh, this is a hybrid from Fedco. And this is a 40 day beet, so this is a nice quick one. Um, these seeds are from, yeah, 2021, so these will be fine. And then I've got a couple of packages from two different places of the Touchstone Gold beet. And um, I really like that one. I grew it last year. It's a, it's a very pretty beet and it was really good. I only got one like really nice one. I have struggled with beets in the past as well as radish. Um, I usually will plant so many and then I'll get like four, you know, usable ones. So this is going to be the year because I have done my homework and we're going to, we're going to knock it out of the park this year. These seeds are really old, um, but I'm going to try and just throw them in the garden somewhere um, just to get them used up. Okay, and then in the carrot department, and you definitely want to plant carrots in the fall because they get so much sweeter as you get like colder and colder and they can handle, you know, staying in the ground, you know, after light frost and stuff like that. And so you can have them sort of stored outside for a little while. 
This is Burpee's uh, Short and Sweet Carrot, and that is 68 days to harvest. Just another one, this is the organic. And then this is the Danvers 126, you know, so these are obviously hybrid. This is 75 days to harvest. So these will be needing to go in soon to get them like in the good zone. Um, I can plant them for the next few weeks, I think, and get away with it. So that's what I shall be doing. And then we've got um, the Scarlet Nance here as well. And I believe I have a shorter version of that. I don't think I have it. It might be in this box still. I have a shorter version of that as well, so I might plant that instead. This is the coral carrot. I really like these. They're very sweet and um, pretty. They're like a pastel-y kind of color, and um, they are a pretty quick grow. Let's see. So this is a 55-day carrot. Um, so this one I'll be able to squeeze some in. And then this is the Romance F1 variety. I had very good luck with these this year as well. So those romance ones are really nice. I've enjoyed growing those. And then um, I have also had a lot of luck with the Yaya carrot right here. This is from Fedco and this is another 55 day um, seed. And this is actually empty. I just finished using the rest of that up. And the good thing about radish and carrots and beets is that you can kind of, beets get a little bit bigger, but you can kind of work them between other crops and they just, they fit nice and, and tidy in there and you can stuff a lot of them in there. Radish especially grow really well in containers. So if you're working with just a balcony garden or even if you have like, a, you know, a more powerful grow light, you can even grow them indoors. I've learned the trick to radish and carrots and most root crops is just to have a soil that isn't too compact. You've really got to, it's got to be well draining and fluffy kind of soil on the top. Here's some other carrots that I have not planted. These came from, a lot of these came from a seed swap. So these are the Chantenay Red Core carrots. So I might try those out. I've got the Atomic Red Carrot here. This is a 74 day carrot. Um, I will probably skip this one this time around. And then I've got a couple little seed packs from Zella Jake Farms. Um, and these are the Parisian carrots and the rainbow mix that they have. These are a little bit older, so I pulled these out so I can try and use them up. So you may not get great germination on those, but I wanna make sure I'm not wasting any of my seeds because I do have kind of a large collection of them. So we wanna make good use of those. Otherwise I have to feel bad about buying them and we don't want that. So here's more of that red Chantenay carrot that I got in the seed swap as well. So I have a purchase pack from Fedco and this is from last year. So these are 70 day carrots. So we'd be pushing it, but we can get those in as well. For cucumbers, I've pulled out the dragon's egg variety from Fruition Seeds. I really enjoyed growing these last year. They're not, um, I would say taste wise, I prefer Okay, well, I really love the silver slicer. I don't seem to have my package out here. I might be out of them, but that's kind of my favorite. Um, but these dragon's eggs were so cool. They're very quick, they grow fast, and they're great with salads because they're just a round little cucumber. It's got a, a, like a thinner skin, so it's not you know gross to eat or anything if you're bothered by a thick cucumber skin. Um, and then for the thick skinned uh, pickling, we've got the sassy pickling cucumber. I have a lot of seeds from Fedco because I really like their company um, politics, environment. Um, they're worker owned. I think it's really cool. And they're also from New England, so gotta, gotta represent. Um, these came from the free seeds. This is some Fairy Morse uh, Boston pickling cucumber and they, they seem to have some kind of dye on them to make them easy to plant. Um, I don't know, I might donate those. Um, so then I've got the Garden Sweet Burpless uh, Cucumber. I almost said tomato. So then we have the Garden Sweet Burpless Hybrid. Again, these came in the um, free seeds that I got. So I'm gonna give it a shot, never know. Uh, this is a 55 day to harvest, so that's nice and quick. I like to see that. So when you're trying to figure out what to plant, if you don't, if you feel like you're, you're always like forgetting what is good to plant, you just look at the days to harvest and then you can kind of compare that to how many days you have until your average first frost. I also have the black nebula carrot. We just found that, so that can go on the carrots. <laughs> oh, here's those Nance, Nance 
half long right there. And let's see. Those are 65 days, so that's pretty quick. I've got some dill. I have a couple packages of this that I want to get outside. Um, I have terrible luck with dill in the spring, so I think that it's gonna go a lot better for me in the fall. And if you want beautiful swallowtail butterflies in your garden, you should plant some dill and let it go to, let it go to flower and do its thing. Call the beautiful butterflies to your garden. Okay, I have a few squash in here. Let's see. So this can be a little trickier to get all the way to finish, but I think I can get a few fruits off of some squash plants if I get them in pretty soon. As we're sitting here, I can't, I do not know exactly how many days we have until the um, average first frost, but I will put it right here and that will give you an idea of how many days I have. I'm pretty sure that I have at least 60 more days. So this is a 63 day to harvest. So if I got this in pretty quickly, then I could probably have some zucchini. The trick is, is that they don't necessarily like when it gets cold and damp. So if it's cold and damp in the fall, but I also have some very small squash here. These are only 50 day to harvest. And these are the Peter Pan hybrid. And these are also 50 days to harvest. And these came in the free seeds as well. So this is the early prolific straight neck. So there are a few things that you're gonna wanna start indoors if you're starting now, because it's still really hot outside and these seedlings will not take off very well or at all if the weather is too hot. So these are some things that I'm gonna be planting indoors. And that's basically your brassica family. Now this is something I'm gonna to have to grow outside in some kind of cover because I don't want the abundance of cabbage butterflies to get all over these immediately and just ruin them. So I have some spinach here and I have a few varieties of spinach. So we're probably gonna come up on more when we go through the greens in here. Right now I have some from the free seeds that I got and these are, is the spinach big ruffles hybrid and the salad sensation hybrid. And I'll tell you getting all these seeds in the mail from my friend was so cool because it was right in the middle of my no buy July where I was really just not buying anything. I was trying to go on like a cold turkey, like stop stress shopping, like knock it off recession training, you know? <laughs> so, and it went, it went really well, but I got this big box of, you know, and it felt like I had bought something even though I didn't, it was, it was so nice. So thank you, Lindsay, if you happen to see this. So then I have some collards. I've never grown collards before, but I'm gonna give it a shot. This is 65 days to harvest, and these are the Georgia collards. Space hybrid spinach. This is a 35 to 40 day harvest. So you can get a lot of food grown between now and the winter. So if you got discouraged during your summer gardening at all, like this is, I'm telling you, this is the time. There's less pests, which is great. Plus it's not so fucking hot while you're out there working. <laughs> And here I have some broccoli and cauliflower, which I would love to try to grow. It's, it's something I haven't even approached because I really don't have a, um, you know, like just a structure built to keep things off of my plants. So I'm gonna work on that <laughs> so that I can actually you know, experience the joys of growing my own broccoli and cauliflower. So this is an 85 day to harvest. So this is something that I'm gonna wanna start indoors again so that it, the heat does not stunt them or bolt them early. I don't think I'm gonna bother with this one, but um, this says it's container friendly, so that's cool. This is the Vanilla Sky Hybrid of cauliflower. I've got the Decicio and Sun King Hybrid um, broccoli here. So this Sun King one, this is a 71 day to harvest. And um, this thing is supposed to be pretty heat tolerant. So I'm hoping that that's going to make for an easy transition outside in case we still have some late season heat, which is pretty typical around here. Then we got another 50 to 85 day harvest variety. So I've got quite a few of these. So another thing that the fall is great for is lettuce. As you may know, lettuce bolts in the heat, so it's pretty difficult to grow it in the summer. There's a lot of heat tolerant varieties and you can totally do it in the shade, it's totally possible. But it's just so good in, in the cooler weather. So 
This is when you want to really start a bunch of lettuce. And I would start seeds every two weeks just so that you have, um, you know, a constant harvest and you can really be generous when you're harvesting and make big salads and enjoy those last uh, root vegetables of the season. So we've got a couple year old packet of seeds here, but these are still coming up all right for me. These are Tom Thumb Baby Bib Lettuce. And this is just like a little, it's just a little like butter crunch head, very good. Uh, this is the Mascara Oak Leaf Lettuce. This is really pretty and it gets pretty large. This is the Butter Crunch Bib Lettuce. So again, the Butter Crunch Lettuce, I love. Love Butter Crunch. Then we have like the Devil's Ear Lettuce here and this is a Loose Leaf Lettuce. And I've been growing that one as well. This is another really beautiful one. If, I, I will cut in footage right here of a lot of these lettuces growing together. You could make such a like a beautiful planting of these that would be uh, very lovely on the eyes and very lovely for your mouth. This is some blushed butter oak lettuce. Again, very lovely. And we've got the baby oak leaf lettuce. Again, these are very cute little heads of lettuce, very container friendly. We've got some romaine lettuce here from a seed swap and this is an eruption variety of romaine lettuce. I know these don't all have pictures but um, that takes a really long time so I might, I might not put pictures of everything in, I apologize. And then this is another favorite variety of mine and um, this, is, um, this is the Marvel of Four Seasons. This, this is what that this is, I think, translates to. So um, this is a great lettuce to just grow anytime. So I always keep some of this in this little container just to seed whenever I can. Um, I have terrible luck direct seeding lettuce. So if you do too, just just don't. Just, just start it indoors or start it on a porch or something in the shade. Um, just make sure it doesn't get too hot. It dries out really easy. Well, here's the package for the silver slicer cucumbers I couldn't find earlier. Yeah, there's no more. <laughs> Those were bred by Cornell for powdery mildew resistance. And I can attest to the fact that they do seem to last a little bit longer than a lot of the cucumber plants I have grown. I've always had problems with the powdery mildew. Although I'm learning to, you know, trellis them, get them up off the ground, prune them so there's airflow. There are ways to get around it. And I have some packets of zinnia in here that um, say that they are shorter harvest. So like this is says it's a 35 day to bloom. I think it's probably a little longer than that. Maybe that maybe they're doing some drugs, but um, this is also says 35 days. This also says 35 days. So those are some things I may throw in the ground just to see if I can get some more flowers. I actually didn't really spend a lot of time cutting bouquets so far this year. And I don't know if it, at first I was like, oh, my flowers aren't really doing well this year, so I haven't been able to cut bouquets. But now I'm like, you know what? I think it's because I haven't been cutting them a lot. They're not bulking up the way that they usually do. And that's my bad. I was a little distracted with other areas of the garden this year. So I hope this gave you some ideas of things that you can plant in your fall garden. And um, you know, if you had a hard time this summer, definitely don't give up. You still have time. You still have plenty of time to grow some things. And hopefully this gave you uh, a little bit of encouragement. So I will see you guys very soon in the next one. Big thank you to my patrons as always for helping me get more videos out to all of you. So mwah, mwah, mwah. I love you all. See you very soon. Bye.